Few things pack a punch like the monstrous force of a Category 5 hurricane. Until Hurricane Andrew slammed into Florida's coast. Good morning. We're live in the Weather Channel Forecast Center. Continue to watch history in the making here on August 24th, 1992. Few had experienced that level of power. Howling winds topping out at 165 miles per hour flattened homes, tossed cars, and stripped paint from the buildings as debris sliced through trees. In the end, South Florida was rocked to ruins. It's hard to fathom anything more ferocious than a Category 5 storm. At least, that was the case 30 years ago, when Andrew was dubbed the costliest hurricane in U.S. history. But in recent years, as tropical cyclones have only become more intense, more destructive, and more expensive, that record has since been shattered seven times. First, by Hurricane Katrina in 2005, followed by Sandy, Irma, Harvey, Maria, and most recently, Hurricane Ian in 2022. And as warming continues, researchers are wondering if the current way we categorize hurricanes may not be enough to show how powerful these storms are today and will be in the future. Let's start with the basics. What exactly is a hurricane? So the general term here is tropical cyclone, sort of globally, it's the same sort of uh, system. But that name can change depending on where they form. Here in the States, we call them hurricanes. But in other parts of the world, they're called typhoons, cyclones, or cyclonic storms. But think of them as cousins that are all uh, linked as tropical cyclones. No matter what you call them, all tropical cyclones get their energy from the ocean. The warmer the ocean is, the more fuel is available for a growing storm to tap into. And climate change has turned up the dial on ocean heat around the world setting the stage for stronger and more destructive storms. Some of the most intense hurricanes and tropical cyclones across the world are indeed getting stronger. And we've seen this lately in particular with some very, very powerful super typhoons and category five hurricanes in the Eastern Pacific and the Atlantic. In the Western Hemisphere, meteorologists use a ranking system based on wind speed. The Saffir-Simpson hurricane wind scale is a, a five category scale used to classify hurricanes based solely on wind speed. It is a wind only scale that categorizes the maximum sustained winds in a hurricane on a scale from one to five. There's no upper, upper bounds to how high a category five can get. But recently, several storms have gone way beyond what's considered a category five. Less than a decade ago in 2015, Hurricane Patricia peaked out way above the beginning of the category five threshold with max winds up to 215 miles an hour. And that is, uh, a concerning alarm bell that the atmosphere, I think, is ringing. Which is why researchers are proposing a potential Category 6 that starts at about 192 miles per hour. After analyzing storms occurring between 1980 and 2021, they identified five that would theoretically be classified as a Category 6. Typhoon Haiyan in 2013, Hurricane Patricia in 2015, Typhoon Moranti in 2016, Typhoon Goni in 2020, and Typhoon Sergei in 2021. There have not been any Atlantic hurricanes that have exceeded that threshold yet. Some that recently got close would be the likes of Wilma in 2005, Dorian in 2019, that got up to 185 miles an hour. And when you consider that Hurricane Patricia just on the other side of Mexico, East Pacific in 2015, peaked out at 215 miles an hour, maximum sustained winds. It is possible that we could someday in the not so distant future see Atlantic hurricanes that get above 190 or up to 195 miles an hour. While climate change is creating a favorable environment for stronger storms, don't expect to see a sixth category anytime soon. But many fear that adding a sixth category could backfire. 
and lessen the threat of a Category 5 storm since that's no longer the most severe rating. This paper is an interesting exercise sort of answering the question, if we were to have a Category 6 uh, threshold, where would that start? Even without the introduction of a Category 6, the Saffir Simpson scale has been the subject of debate and faces criticism for only taking winds into account and not dangers from storm surge, flooding, or tornadoes. I don't think that we need to add a sixth category to the, to the hurricane wind scale right now. It is so ingrained in society now that category five um, uh, is such, you know, the high-end uh, hurricanes that, that we experience. Meteorologists already have a hard time convincing people that even lower category storms are dangerous. I mean, how often do you hear people living along the coast saying they don't even consider a storm unless it becomes a major one? For example, I think in general, we are much better off not focusing on the category of the storm and more focused on location-specific, hazard-specific information because hurricanes of all categories can be catastrophic, especially when you consider the effects of water. The greatest threat to life and property isn't the wind. It's actually the water. For example, let's take a look at Hurricane Charlie in 2004 and Hurricane Ian in 2022. Both storms were classified as a Category 4, both storms struck the Florida coast, and if you only look at the category number, you might assume that both storms shared similar impacts. But that wasn't the case. Compared to Charlie, Ian moved much slower and was much, much wider. Charlie produced a maximum surge of 6 to 7 feet, while Ian reached an estimated 12 feet of storm surge. We've had a big, big problem with people underestimating lesser category systems, less intense hurricanes. But we gotta realize that there are a lot of other characteristics of a hurricane that can be really bad other than the maximum sustained winds. For example, Hurricane Ike in 2008 made landfall on the upper Texas coast as a category two hurricane with a peak storm surge of 15 to 20 feet. Even in tropical storms have been flooding disasters. So we can't underestimate the impacts and the life-threatening aspects and the damage capability of a hurricane just because it is quote-unquote only a category one, two, or three. So while a category six likely won't be added to the Saffir Simpson wind scale anytime soon, that wasn't actually the point of the study. They're simply pointing out that hurricanes are peaking out a bit stronger and the researchers are bringing up the issue of the open-endedness of the Category 5, there is no top end to it. And the possible need for a Category 6, mainly from their perspective, to raise the awareness that hurricanes are peaking out a bit stronger recently. The bottom line here is the way these storms behave is changing. They're growing more intense. And the point experts are trying to drive home is, when a tropical system is headed your way, Pay attention, no matter what the category number is.